in this uh, segment now we will talk about the checkpoints we have seen uh, the complete cell cycle what all changes take place here we also saw the uh, areas where the changes are taking place for a particular reason and how the c value changes and the chromosome numbers also now when the cell goes through the cycle there are three places where uh, it is checked whether the preparation is as per the requirement or not. Those are known as checkpoints. So, as we said, three checkpoints. The first checkpoint and every checkpoint has to check for particular things. So, the first checkpoint which is there is towards the end of G1 phase. So, here... When the G1 is about to end, this is the place where we have this first checkpoint and this is known as G1 checkpoint. It is also given one term in case of eukaryotes. In eukaryotes, it is also known as restriction checkpoint. And if the same thing is to be uh, referred to a yeast, uh, an yeast cell, then we call it start point. So third term, but that is applicable only in case of yeast. And here it is in case of higher eukaryotes. So we can call it start point, but that is in yeast only. So these are the terms which are given. G1 because it is in G1 phase. Restriction checkpoint because this is the time when the cell gets committed for completing the cell cycle. Now what are the things which will be checked here? The first thing which is checked at this checkpoint is whether the DNA is proper or not. Is there any damage to DNA? Because now in the next stage the DNA is going to replicate and if the cell has already damaged DNA, then the damaged DNA will get replicated. So, it is going to check for damage to DNA. This is to check for. These are the points for which this checkpoint is actually meant. So, it is going to check whether the DNA is damaged or not. It will also check for all the preparation, whether enzymes are ready or not, sufficient ATP is produced or not. So, it is going to check for enzymes, other proteins and ATP. And towards the end, it also helps in activation of, it activates cyclin. Now, these cyclins are group of proteins which initiate cell division. So, cyclins are proteins that initiate cell division. And here it activates cyclin dependent kinase. This CDK stands for cyclin dependent kinase. Kinase. This, sorry, kinase. this cyclin dependent kinase is responsible for initiation of transcription. So this initiates transcription which ensures that now the cell will enter S phase. So this indicates that now the cell can enter S phase. So what are the events which are going to be checked here? Number one, whether DNA is normal or not, whether there is any damage to the DNA or not. So if there is no damage to DNA, if all enzymes, proteins, ATPs, everything is synthesized, then cyclin would get activated. And this is one cyclin that is cyclin dependent kinase. As soon as this gets activated, the process of transcription gets initiated and this is the surety that now 
the cell is going to go into F space. And that is why in G1, we say that if cell completes G1, then it is committed for cell division. So in G1, the important point is, if everything is normal, then the cell is committed for cell division. That is after G1. This is first checkpoint. The second checkpoint is at the end of G2. So second checkpoint is here in this region where G2 is about to end. And as it is in G2 phase, we call it G2 checkpoint. What is checked here? There is no checkpoint in S. So G2 is going to check for two things. The changes or the things which took place in S phase as well as what is taking place in G2 also. So here it's going to check for a couple of things like DNA replication. Whether DNA replication has properly taken place or not. So in G1 checkpoint, the damage to DNA was checked. If everything is normal, then in S phase that DNA replicates. In G2 checkpoint, now it is checked for the replication, whether the DNA has properly replicated or not. Then next point is, has the cell accumulated sufficient proteins, enzymes and ATP because now the cell is going to get into division. So it checks for proteins, enzymes and ATP properly synthesized or not. Especially the proteins that is tubulin because they will be required to form the spindle fibers. So especially protein that is tubulin. They are synthesized in sufficient quantity or not. So here the main checking is for the replication, whether this DNA has properly replicated or not and all the preparation is proper or not. Now, if everything is normal, then the cell gets into the M phase. And here again, there is one checkpoint and that checkpoint is at the end of meta phase. Or let me draw it with blue and this is the third checkpoint. It is known as M checkpoint. It is also known as spindle fiber checkpoint. And as the name tells us, spindle fiber, that means this is the most important thing for which this checkpoint is going to work. So there is one more name. It is called spindle checkpoint. The most important thing which is checked here is whether the spindle fibers are properly attached to the kinetochores of the chromosomes or not. Here it was checked for DNA replication. Now the DNA has replicated. So let me draw a chromosome here and this is the chromosome. It has its two arms where the DNA has already replicated. So we start seeing these two arms, which are the sister chromatids. And when the cell comes at metaphase, we know that these chromosomes, they align themselves on the equatorial plane. And they have the skynetochore here. When spindle fibers attaches to the skynetochore, one on this side, one on this side. When spindle fibers contract, at that time, this chromosome is going to split. Then only one chromosome goes towards one end, another chromosome goes towards the other end. If the spindle fibers are not properly attached, a situation, suppose this chromosome is not attached to spindle fiber on this side. It is attached only on one side. That means these two chromosomes are going to go towards one end and this cell will have one extra chromosome. This non-separation may result into complications. So 
This checkpoint is going to check whether the chromosomes have arranged themselves on the equatorial plane or not. And it is also going to check whether the spindle fibers are attached to the kinetochore or not so that there is proper separation of these chromosomes. So M checkpoint and once the spindle fibers are properly attached then the cell gets into anaphase. When these spindles start to contract resulting in splitting of this chromosome. So these three checkpoints ensure that the cell division takes place in a proper manner. Three places where the checkpoints are G1, G2 and M. There is no checkpoint in S phase. G1 checkpoint is also known as restriction point but that term is used only in higher eukaryotes. In East, the term which we use instead of G1 checkpoint, G1 checkpoint can also be used but the other term which can be used is start point. What are the things for which this G1 checkpoint is important? It is going to check for the damage to DNA. If DNA is not damaged, if all the preparation is done, that is enzymes, proteins, ATP, everything is synthesized, then cyclin gets activated. This activated cyclin initiates transcription and as soon as transcription is initiated, this is a guarantee that, the now, that now the cell gets into S phase. These cyclins are group of proteins which initiate cell division. If the cell completes G1 successfully or when it comes to the end and all these points are checked, we say that the cell is committed for cell division. That means now the cell will get into S, G2 and M phase. The second checkpoint is G2 by the end of G2. Here there are two things which are to be checked. The things which have happened in S phase as well as what happened in G2 phase. DNA replication properly done or not. All proteins, enzymes, ATP properly synthesized or not. The most important protein for which it is to be checked is tubulin because this protein will be required for spindle fibre formation when the cell divides. The third checkpoint is known as M checkpoint. M checkpoint. It is actually in metaphase. It is in metaphase. And metaphase is that stage where the chromosomes, they align themselves on the equatorial plane because of uh, stretching of the spindle fibers. And when they come on the equatorial plane, the spindle fibers of the two poles must attach to the kinetochore so that when the spindle fibers stretch or contract, then the cell chromosome splits and equal distribution of chromosome takes place. So this is checked in M checkpoint. And now everything is normal. The cell gets into anaphase, telophase, cytokinesis takes place and cell divides. There is one more small change which has been reported. The cell when it comes into G1 and if all these preparations are uh, as per norms, but certain external conditions are non-favorable. It could be temperature, it could be nourishment. Then temporarily the cell can get into this G0 phase. That means here it is going to prepare, check for DNA, everything. Suppose there is a situation when there is external condition non-favorable. Then the cell comes into G0 temporarily in this quiescent zone. And as soon as the conditions become favorable, it again enters the active part of G1 and then continues with the cycle. But that would take place only if the external conditions are not favorable. So with this, we have completely studied the cell cycle. First, we saw what cell cycle was, what were the stages and interphase and M phase. Interphase has three we have seen the changes which take place in all three, G1S and G2. Then we also saw in short what happens in M phase because we will be discussing mitotic division in detail. We also understood what exactly happens in G0, what is differentiation, re-differentiation and those terms. 
and we also tried to understand how C value changes. And this was the last thing about the cell cycle that is the check.